I'm gonna start this devotion off today by saying go blue. Go blue, and I think you know what I mean when I say that, right? State of Michigan, that's where I live. I'm in Utica, Michigan. And yes, I'm a Wolverine fan. They just won a national championship. And yes, I'm wearing a green shirt. So I'll respect Michigan State, but unfortunately, Michigan State's been in a slump for a long time when it comes to football. Michigan has not been the last three years, but before that, right, we were in quite a slump, maybe seven years. Right? I think of Gold Blue, I also think of the Detroit Lions this weekend, right? What's happening there? But for decades, right, I was questioning things. There's a lot of hope right now. And when I think about football, right, we're going into our devotion, and so stick with me here. Right? I don't know if you're a Lions fan, if you even care about football, or if you care about the Wolverines, but we all care about God, we care about life. And I think about our life, and I think about the prophet Jeremiah, which is where we find ourselves at today. It's a huge book, a huge prophetic book, where a man named Baruch took down Jeremiah's journals and his sermons and his notes and put those all together in a collection for us, Jeremiah speaking to God's children for decades, decades of them going through a huge slump, making horrible decisions, right? committing idolatry, worshiping other gods. God calls it adultery throughout the book of Jeremiah so people understand the pain and the magnitude of their behavior. And then right through that, we see punishment put on God's children. We see them going to 70 years of bondage right, through it all, through the nation Babylon. But God, right, being who he is, right, a God who's gracious and lamenting and constantly through Jeremiah for decades, pleading with his children, listen to me, make better decisions, right, follow me, stop worshiping these false gods, right. God shows his mercy throughout, but ultimately, yes, his children are in exile, but even through that, God's saying, please repent, please come and seek me, please come and pray to me, Come to me, right? And there's hope. There's hope in, in Jeremiah, right? There's good seasons on the horizon. There's good seasons that take place. There are championships, right? Jeremiah 29, 11, many of us are familiar with that great prophetic truth that was spoken over God's children then and is still our promise today. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope in the future, even through the seasons of slump, right? There's a hope in the future coming. But I think a lot of us forget but the next two verses in Jeremiah 29, after 11, right, where God says, Come to me, seek me, pray to me, I will listen to you and you will find me. Right, through the suffering, I do hope and pray that you and I turn to our God and we walk by faith. But even in the good times, even in the championship moments of life, that we continue to go to him, call upon him in our day of trouble, for he will answer us. So, where are we going with this? I don't know where you are in your relationship with God today. Some of us are in a slump. Right? Some of us have been losing for quite some time. Right? We're, we're suffering and, and maybe that's because of our own behavior. Right? And we need to repent, we need to confess, we need to go to God. Maybe it's because the enemy is in on us and is attacking us and there's suffering. And the truth of our faith is that even in the suffering, right, God is going to work, God is with you. And yes, even in our sinful behavior, God is with us. But hang on, hang on, have hope, have hope, right? Championships are coming, better days are ahead. And I pray that you look to God as a general manager, as the CEO, as the head of the company, as the head of the team, right? And as you go to him, you see hope, you see his game plan, right? And he leads you, especially as we go into this new year, that he would lead us, that we will listen to his word as we seek him out. His promise is that he will be there when we seek him out. In fact, Jesus said, right, seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. So many of us, right, we have four-year plans, we have 10-year plans, we have one-year plans, we want to win the championships, we want to succeed. Right? But please don't forget this. Right? Seek God Seek God, put Him first. Seek Him always. He is the holder of it all, right? And that's you and me. So yes, God does have a plan for you and it's a plan of hope. So hang on and seek Him first.